brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. Connor, good to chat with you again. Um, I'll start with Harrogate on, on Saturday. Um, it somewhat felt like Groundhog Day in terms of missed opportunity. Would you agree? Yeah, I would. Um, obviously not nice. We, we felt we should have won the game, so to come away with nothing was um, a real disappointment. What did you make of the performance? I think we were OK in parts. Um, you know, I thought the energy was good and I thought we, you know, you could see their frustrations from from the side that they were on because we were winning all the, the duels and the 1v1s, etc. And um, ultimately, we've just, just not managed to um, score when it mattered and, and obviously not um, done well enough to defend counter-attacks. I know you'll have broken down the game since. Can you pinpoint at all what it is about the side performances at the moment that isn't quite matching what it has done previously under yourself and Mark? Um, I think there's, there's different factors, but again, we're... With conceding early goals, um, you, you're chasing from quite early on, and um, we've we've probably not quite looked to ourselves when when we are chasing recently because we go a little bit too direct, and you know we feel like we have to score straight away. So, um, you know we're looking to to improve our stats. How do you look to rectify that? Is that a, a psychological thing? Is it something you can try and speak to the players about in terms of how they respond to going behind early? I think it's a bit of both. I think it's when you start the game, we, I thought we started really well actually, Harrogate. I thought maybe they're one of the best ones we've started in. Um, but again, when you start so well and you press so high, you know, these maybe runners from midfield um, cause you problems. And if they're not marked, uh, it makes centre halves come into areas that they don't want to be in. And, you know, looking at the goal that, that happened and, and we got punished. So, um, and again, from, from when we went a goal down, We've shown at Stevenage that um, we can get back and obviously we got back into the game at Harrogate but I felt that we were only the team going to score and it was really unfortunate to 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 lose. Yeah, I was going to say to you, how frustrating is that when you did look like the more likely of the two to get that second when you got the equaliser? Yeah, it's, um, you know, you're desperate for, a, for that next goal and you're causing them loads of problems with with your threats, but again, um, if you're not organised behind the ball, because we didn't have an extra man in there, the when the nine drops in to receive it, he, he can't be, he can't be followed because if he's followed, then it's one v one at the back. So it's it's just the kind of little little bits that cause your problems. But you know, we we wanted to go and win the game. How did you assess your performance when you changed the system in the second half? Yeah, I think it had a positive effect. Um, on the game, I don't think they could quite cope with our attacking threats. But I also thought that we looked um, quite—we looked quite. It made me nervous from the sideline on the transitions because um, they, they had a few chances where they just broke from a matter of seconds. So it was quite nice to see the, uh, you know, bodies in the box, etc., and, and, and putting them on the back foot. But it was quite um, nervous to watch when when they won the ball back. You talk about those nerves. How much of a concern is it then that you have that defensive vulnerability about you when you play in a four-four-two? Yeah, and it, it's the, just the shapes that you play against um, in the four-four-two. You know, it's it's a game of man-to-man. -man, really, it's 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 a game where if you lose your duel, you're underloaded, and things can quickly happen. And and it's probably mistakes and things like that that um, determine the game rather than being more structured and disciplined and organised. We were maybe a little bit more. Uh, open and expansive. Is it those nerves that is stopping you from going with a four four two from the off? Would you say? I wouldn't say it was nerves. I'd, I'd say it was nervous moments, as in you know when teams attack you in in ways where they're getting players turning on the half turn who are who are not unopposed. Then it's not a good sign defensively because. But you know that that's the 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 times that make you nervous. Um, it's not the overall nervousness from the system. Um, but again, we we have to look. We have to reflect. You know, you've got to also look at the players that you've got um, at the club and whether they they suit a four four two. And yes, they might suit it in attacking ways, but they might not suit it in, in defensive ways. And that's these are the decisions that we um, we have to make. I don't want to labour this point. I realise it's a big talking point after Saturday. But is it a case, Connor? Then of you not 
trusting the players that you have in your squad right now to play in that system, that formation? No, I mean, we, we trust the players. We we trust in their abilities. Um, but what we feel is is that you know every team's different. Um, you know every team has different strengths and weaknesses, and um, you know the players have have done so well in the the sh- you know the four two three one or the four three three. Um, and we've probably had moments in a four four two, but look quite vulnerable. So I think it's more of the the opportunity to work on things like that is is the most important thing. Is it shaping your summer recruitment drive? Um, I think we we're identifying um, players that we feel are going to make the strong uh, the the squad stronger, and rather than to be um, thinking about you know what system. We're going to play. I think we like to be flexible and, and, and not really long term, just, just be one. But given the opportunity to, to be on the training field and, and to have a good pre season, will we'll allow us to do that. I'm sure you're aware that there's been a lot of talk about the formation amongst the fans after Saturday. As managers, how do you assess all that, all that talk amongst the supporters? Again, I think you know everybody's entitled to their opinion, and, 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 and that's right, and it's always been that way. Um, I think we've we've created a lot of chances in the last few games, more than we've ever created um, before. So I think we we are becoming more attacking, um, but for some reason we we, we don't seem to be um, scoring the chances when we should, um, and potentially looking a little bit um, more vulnerable because we're we're trying to put bodies in the box. And I spoke about it last week about we've put we probably upped our crosses by about forty percent um, compared to. To the start when we took over and and maybe um, also the shots on goal has, has gone up dramatically since we took over. So um, I think the biggest thing is finding finding ways to win. Can you understand the frustration at all? Yeah, of course. You know, people want to win games. We we have that frustration as well because we want to win the games, but ultimately with with mistakes and and poor decision making, uh, no matter what formation you play. Um, you know, opposition can capitalise, um, and that's for both teams, and that's just in in the world of football, really. I don't expect you to give too much away, but how would you look to go about then the way that you set up, the way you approach tomorrow night's game against Tranmere? I think first of all, you've you've got to respect um, where they are in the league, and and um, they've had such a such a good season and a and a real surge um, from when we took over. They were they were winning a lot of games, etc. So. We we feel it's going to be a a real hard game where we're going to be have to be at our best. Um, you know they're a team that keeps possession well, so um, we're gonna we're gonna have to like I said be at our best on the day. In the twenty or so minutes we saw of Ollie Crankshaw on Saturday and the performance that he put in, the injection of pace that he gave you, has he cemented himself a starting spot? Maybe. Listen, not Ollie. Ollie did well and he impacted the game, and that's all we can ask of players coming off the bench is that they um, they make an impact. So um, Ollie's done his his self no uh, no harm. How do you get the most out of Charles Vernon, Connor? It feels like we haven't got the most out of him in, in recent times. I think he's um, you know you all see it the way he glides with the with the ball is you know he's a real talented player. Um, you know I think we've just got to keep working with uh, Chaz and. And keep um, hammering home how we want him to, to play, um, and ultimately he's got to go out there and perform, and we've got to to get to know him uh, as well as we can um, to know what makes him tick. Five games to go, four points between yourselves in the playoffs. Does Tranmere become a must-win? Yeah, you, you could say so. I think nobody wants to win at the minute. It seems, <laughs> um, which is quite strange. But again, there's there's a lot of strange results that happen and. Fortunate for us, we're um, yes, we're less games to to the end of the season, but you know we're no further points away after after uh, the past two results. So um, you know, again, we just want to win every game. I asked Mark a similar question, and I wonder whether this is consistent across the league, given some of the results we've seen recently. But is is the pressure of the playoffs getting to to the sides and the teams involved in those games? I wouldn't I wouldn't say so. No, I think. Um, you know, everybody wants to win games. Everybody wants to get into the playoffs. Everybody wants to perform. Um, but ultimately, at, the, at this moment in time, it just doesn't uh, seem to be quite falling for us. But again, um, that happens to teams in the league, and you know, we're we're just looking to to bounce back, really. Team news wise, are you able to welcome anyone back? 
Um, just just Callum. Callum Cook. So um, it'll be nice to, to have him involved again. That's a big boost for you, is it not? Yeah, he's he's um, done really well for us uh, as Callum. So um, in the way that we play and you know the way that he retains the ball, he's, he's, he's certainly a, an important player. Again, to be consistent with how you bring players back into the fold, is it fair of me to expect that he's probably going to start on the bench as opposed to come straight back into the starting eleven, or is he in a condition that you can start him from the off? No, I think um, the safest way is, is to build him up, especially um, the first game. So we'll manage him and, and make sure that when he comes on, he's, he's able to deal with the intensity and the tempo. Any other fresh concerns after Saturday? Not from Saturday, no. Um, I wanted to ask you about probably the obvious point today. Um, I think we've all seen it, and I think anyone who follows football, whether you're a fan or a coach or a player or even someone in the media as well, is probably feeling a bit concerned about what the future of the game may be after the news of the European Super League. Um, as for someone who's been involved in the game since you were near to Grasshopper, as I've been told by some of my colleagues who I work with as well, Connor, um, what's your take on it? Um, it's... Uh... It's a difficult one. Um, I think from from where we are, I've I've really got no opinion on it because it it doesn't really change um, the position that we're in at all. It doesn't affect us. Um, however, there's be a lot of frustrated people in the world of football, um, and probably Gary Neville summed summed it up. In terms of the the drop on effect though that it it could have, and I guess that's the the fear that it could affect Bradford City in the long term if if the plans were to go through. I mean, it, it, it takes. It feels like it takes the game away from the fans. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of people come out and said um, about you know it coming away from the fans and the fans are everything about football, and it would be unfair to to go into a, a different league. And you know, I don't, it's hard to say. I, I probably don't know enough about it. I've not really spent time getting to know the ins and outs. Um, but all I would say is it. It doesn't. It doesn't seem good for the for normal people supporting their clubs. Uh, final point. I often think in, in times like this, it sometimes gets lost or forgotten. But but how much does it mean to be someone involved in the game professionally, whether you're a, a player or indeed a, a manager like yourself? Yeah, it's obviously it's an honour um, for every person, and I'm sure I can speak for everybody at this club um, regarding you know the position that we're in. You know, it, it, we've worked hard and everybody's worked hard to get where they are, to do do the hours to, to make sure they're at a level where they can they can compete and be and be good enough. Um, but again, we're, we're lucky to, to do something we love. Um, you know, I, trust me, it hurts us as, as much as the fans. Um, we've got a real affiliation with the club and, and we want what's, what's best. Um, I think from when we first took over to now, um, if you looked at it, would be delighted with the amount of points we've taken, and and probably think you know wow we've done such a good job. But again, we feel the frustrations of the the past few results and and performances. Um, even though we've had enough chances to score in the last two, um, but what we'll do is work even harder to to make sure that you know the next thing that happens is we're going to bounce back and we're going to go right to the end and we're never going to give up and, and you know we'll we'll leave no stone unturned. Go well tomorrow night, Connor. Cheers. Hi, Connor. Hi. Um, on that point, it, it's it's a strange one, isn't it? Because when you came in, most fans would have bitten your hand off for a chance to be where you are in the league now. But having had such a good run, it's, it, it becomes a disappointment that you can't push on that bit further. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's the kind of thing that happens. Um... You know, when you when you start going up the league and you start seeing seeing the playoffs in front of you, you, you feel that you know that's that's right for us and we're good enough. Um, that's what people think, and and we echo that because we want to get as high as we can. But unfortunately, in in teams, you you hit um, dips of form, and we've hit one at the at the wrong time. But there's opportunities for us to to climb back up. And how? What's the emotion like when you come off the pitch and you see the other scores and you realise that? The gap is still four points. Is there a, oh, thank goodness for that, we haven't slipped any further behind, or or is it a, we really had a chance to close that gap today? I think different people look at it in different ways. Um, you know, everybody, it just seems like it's it's surreal how nobody's pulled away and, 
you know, if we'd have won the last two games, you know, look where we'd have been. So, but I think, you know, we can't look at the past. You know, we've got we've got to perform in the next five games, and that, it's as simple as that. Um, if we're out there at the end of it, um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, but we we have our performances have to improve, and we have to be harder to beat. Yeah. And just finally for me, um, Harry Pritchard, how's he progressing with his injury? Yeah, Harry's doing well. He's he's obviously had his operation and and now he's back, um, doing his rehab at the club. So it's it's been great to to have him back around. And you're fairly confident he'll be back for next season. Yeah, you know the the surgeons have said he's he'll he'll be fine. Okay, thanks very much. Thank Good luck you. tomorrow. Cheers. Hi, Connor. Hi. Um, you were saying obviously about about Callum being back in the back in the fold. I mean, he's you know he's been such an integral part of this team, hasn't he? And and you, you look at the number ten and the different role players you tried in that role since. I mean, it, it sort of suits him so much. And when he's not there, you, you've noticed the difference, haven't you? Um, yeah, I think we've you have to um, tweak things for different players who play in that formation, um, especially in that ten role. And you ask different things from different players, and the way Callum uh, plays is different to Clayton, is different to Vern's, is different to Evans. Um, but again, we we look forward to welcoming back. I was going to say, I mean, I mean it would be a very timely boost, wouldn't it? Because you know, you, you certainly missed him because he's been in, he was in such good form, wasn't he? And so so you know, so great in, in creating chances and making, basically making the team tick. Yeah, he's a creative player, and and that's where the the best way to describe Callum and. And the numbers and figures he was getting towards, um, well, just before he got injured, it was, it was really promising. He was, you know, two assists, assists here, three assists here, you know, you know, he was getting goals, etc. So, you know, we were just pleased with his his performances. To so to lose him um, was not great, but again, it's a squad game, and we've got to be able to um, to still perform. Were you worried you might have lost him for the rest of the season, or were you always confident that he'd be back, at, you know, before the end? Yeah, I think we always we always knew that he'd be back, um, all going well from the medics team. So, um, you know, it's it's great that we have him back. Again, it's probably one of those where you know you're desperate to get a player who's who's informed back, but you've got to balance it against rushing him back, haven't you? So it's that it's that dilemma again, isn't it? Yeah, you like to say it is. It can be because the worst thing to happen now for Callum would be um, is, is we put him in too early and he he ends up having a reoccurrence or a different injury. So. And that's not what we need. We've got five games where we need, um, you know, a squad fully fit. And um, as you were saying to Jamie earlier, obviously about the, you know, people saying why aren't they going for it and all this sort of thing. But when you look at the, the stats, as you say, the amount of chances you've had in the last couple of games, you know, it, it hardly suggests a team who was sort of holding back, does it? I, I don't feel personally that that we were. I think again, the evidence is there with the crosses, the amount of crosses, the shots. Um, how many recoveries we had in in the opposition's last third and and things like that it just shows that we were pressing. You know we were whipping balls in where we had the opportunity. We were trying to land on seconds. So I would I would say that you know we were pushing full backs on etc. And we were having forward runs. So we were going for it. Um, so you know we, we but we again we've we've got to assess that and and it's you know times to do that and times not to do that. Opposition dependent. Um, but again, you know, we're trying to score more goals, we're trying to affect the game in more positive ways. And, and in terms of the players, I mean, how do you sort of sense the mood? Do you still think there's a, and I know players will say we can still do it, but do you still sense there's that, that belief in the group after the couple of setbacks that, you know, they, they've still got the capabilities because they're, they're going to have to go on a run now, aren't they? I do. I do believe the, um, they feel like they can do it and we can do it. And, and certainly there's a possibility and until we can't possibly do it, we'll, we'll give our best. As you say, I mean, playing a team like Tranmere up there with you, you know, it's you know, it's, it's, say it's another you've got to be on your A game again, haven't you? Yeah, and that's what it is. You've you've got to go out and perform uh, individually, collectively. Um, you can't leave yourself open to for silly early goals and etc. We've got to make a real hard game of it. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City.